Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you. It's good to be here. And it's good to be able to worship the Lord together as children of God. So uh, let's worship God now. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this time that we can gather together. Receive this time of worship, Lord, and have your way in this place. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a, and a heart to receive your precious word this morning. May it produce fruit in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.
stars burn down and the earth wears out and we stand before the throne with the witnesses who have gone before we will rise just want to give a quick announcement um, and then uh, Lane and others will continue with other announcements. We want to have our online presence um, like intentionally. So we want to work on it so that people who are at home, people who follow us and they, they listen to the word of God, they can um, benefit. So actually we have a testimony here of someone who did a search, Francois is here, he just searched for a church and he watched our service online and now he's here. <laughs> so it's important that we really be intentional about that. So Brian is here and she's gonna help us build the website and uh, it's, it's a new one that she's gonna work on and our social media. So. Um, uh, you're going to be seeing her around. Be nice to her. <laughs> but she will also be taking photos. Now, with privacy, we know that not all of us want maybe to be our faces to be to preach the gospel online. You may just want to preach the gospel in the neighborhood, but not on the website. And that's okay. 
And uh, we want to know if you don't want uh, your face to show on the church website, come to me or any other leaders. And there is a technology now that to make that happen, you won't have um, your face there. So thank you so much. So she can start taking photos, but um, if you don't want anything, she, your face to be shown, let us know. Good morning, everyone. Um, as for announcements today, I believe John is going to give some announcements. So I guess I'm introducing the announcements. <laughs> Go ahead. Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> um, yeah, I was asking Lynn because I had a few things I wanted to say. And one might be, please pray for Rose. Because she's got a uh, few things. Like one is her... She's got problems with her hearing right now, her ears, some kind of water in her ear. So just pray for her and um, her elbow. And maybe you could think about um, her eyes too. So just pray for her because she's been off work and she's supposed to go to work tomorrow. But we don't know what's going to happen. She's going to try to go. I know she's going to try to go. But just pray for her because something, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow exactly. Um, but anyway, I had a few announcements, and um, one thing I wanted to say, first of all, is to say thank you for praying, because we need your prayers all the time, and so we went to Super C yesterday, and we packed some groceries, and just so you know, it went really well, and it was a beautiful thing to see these people and uh, to talk to them, and there's some beautiful conversations that happened, and um, we raised a lot of money too. We raised uh, eight, well, total was $970. Yeah, it's amazing. And we had a great time with the manager who was there, so that was nice. Um, we want to actually to pray to for those people we met, because we also give out a little piece of paper. You know, we are from here. And we, you know, support this uh, outreach to Rwanda. So pray for them that they will, you know, love that idea and will even want to know God through it. So we are hoping to do that again next week, too. So you could pray about that. And also, if you want to help, some of you could come and, you know, be, you know, tell me. And we'll make sure we get enough people. So that would be great if you could come. And also, uh, Lynn has been raising money, too. She's been cutting hair for people. And so that's a very cool thing. So it would be lovely if you could come for Lynn's uh, salon, you know? <laughs> She's got a sign outside her door and, you know, come on in. <laughs> yeah. And um, another thing is that um, in two weeks, there's going to be a remembrance service for Phil, Barbara's husband. And Kathy's here, too. So it's really nice to see you, Kathy. And uh, so Barbara wanted to say that she'd love for you to come. So it's at 1030 in the morning. And Phil has a testimony, you know, that he's had a life of uh, God's grace in his life. So please come and, and hear that. And also on Saturday, this is May 4th, by the way. So this is two weeks. Um, May 4th is also the uh, Christian Farmers Concert, and it would be great if you could come for that, too. And that starts at 6 in the evening, and there's a sign at the door, but I also have little invitation cards, too. So please consider that and pray for it, just so that it goes well. And I'd love to invite you to please bring some desserts for it. Because we want to have a party. You know, it's kind of like, you know, we'll be sitting at tables. We're going to bring tables in and set it up as a kind of a coffee house kind of thing. And we'll offer people desserts. So I'm hoping, because we don't have very many prepared, but maybe at home you could make some desserts. And please bring them in. And even next Sunday would be a great time. You know, if you, during the week, think about it and maybe prepare and bring some in. And we can put them in the freezer and we'll start collecting them so we can have little squares, you know. We'd like to have them in little 
pieces so that we'll be able to serve the people. So that'll help us out a lot. If you could start bringing them in, we could put them in the freezer to start with, and then like even any time you come, please bring them and we'll, we'll preserve them. And I also wanna, did you get some pictures? No? Okay, I, I tried to put a uh, picture on. We would love you to pray for this festival called Udue en Fête. So that's on June 24th, the St. Jean Baptiste Day weekend. We have the table for five days and we meet probably about 3,000 people. So we're really praying. Nick sent in the application form this week, but we have to get approval. So pray that we'll get in and that it'll be a blessed time. Like every year it's been a really nice thing. It's, we've met so many people and we just pray we can get in again and do the same thing again this year. So please pray for all those things and be part of it. Um, also, after service, Pastor Fidel will be meeting with the young adults and the youth. So just stay behind if you guys participate in that and um, have a time of fellowship with Pastor Fidel. Um, I'd like to read a verse. And this is what's been speaking to me this week. So this is taken from the book of Philippian, and it's, um, it's Paul speaking. Philippian uh, chapter 3, verse 7. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ, Jesus our Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings. Well, not so much the last part, but, but by the grace of God, <laughs> we'll grow in maturity there as well, and we'll be able to, to see through these hard times and grow in those hard times. It's been speaking to me very, very much that everything that I've gained in this world is actually a loss for Christ in the material sense, so something to ponder. So... Um, so I guess we can bow and pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, as we grow in maturity, as we grow in understanding of your Holy Spirit and, and knowing how to constantly be aware of his presence. Lord, that we may grow in maturity, knowing that we aren't fooling, we aren't fooling God when we choose to stay blind to the things that convict us, we are fooling ourselves and we are grieving the Holy Spirit. So help us understand that obedience in Christ is to show God that we love him. And thank you, Lord, that we may continue to grow in strength and in the ability to see and to hear with eyes, with new eyes, the eyes of the Spirit, and the ears that comes from understanding the, the Scriptures and hearing what is good and pleasing unto you. Father, we thank you that you direct this church in this path and in that unity of Spirit that will help us grow in faith and in understanding and in wisdom and in love. I pray, O oh Lord, that you protect us and that you continue, Lord God, to, to give us this excitement and this purpose in you. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you bless today, you, you bless the message today. May it come to you as a sweet-smelling aroma. And may your Holy Spirit power give us understanding and may it convict us in order to, for us to continue to grow. 
And Lord, I pray for all the needs of the church. And I thank you, Lord, that you are aware of each and every one of us and of our needs. So, Lord, I pray that we are able to lay it at your feet today and have a spirit of peace and to stay here in the moment with our eyes fixed on you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so we need two children. I think, I think we'll go with, <laughs> with two new children. <laughs> Not always the same ones. We're going to go with, with Pastor Fidel's children today. All right? And Claude and Marvel. There you go. Now, which one of you is Claude and which one of you is Marvel? <laughs> All right. Okay, let's pray for the offering. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for this wonderful offering and that you bless it and you bless the giver and the gift. And I thank you, Lord, that you have your way and your purpose in this church and you continue to grow our finances in order to help your community and your people in Jesus' name. Amen. You can go now. You, you on this side and you on this side. Here. Are you, okay. Go. While the children are going, are passing, we'll, we'll pray. We'll pray. Um, for, we'll pray for Nicole, right now. So we had a, a report about Nicole this week that uh, she has cancer, and that the cancer is in her lungs and is spreading through her body. Is that is that the, is that the understanding? Stage. Okay. So. Thank you. All right. So, prayer request. Yes, Diane? Your grandma's at the hospital? Is that Joan? Is, uh, what's wrong? Okay, we're going to pray for Joan. Okay, let's pray for Joan as well. Okay, so we'll take a special time of prayer. Okay, what's her name? Kim. Kim, okay. Yes? Oh, okay. All right. We're just going to bring up these requests. A praise report. Yes, thank you, Lord. All right. So let's just bow down and pray for these urgent needs. Father God, you see the needs and the urgent needs, Lord God, of your people. Like right now, we bring up, we bring up Nicole to you. And Lord, we thank you that. We thank you for Nicole. We thank you that she belongs to you and that she is your child and has been faithfully serving you for so many years. And you see right now, you see her suffering. And I pray in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for Nicole on the cross. And he suffered. And he shed his blood for her. And he said, it is done. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus for that precious blood to be upon Nicole to cover her upon her lungs and upon her whole body. In the name of Jesus, by your stripes, Jesus, you were healed. And we pray, Lord God, your will in Nicole's life right now for your strength and for your peace that surpasses all understanding. 
and we speak to the cancer and we say, in the name of Jesus, we command you, cancer, to depart from Nicole. Because your word is life. And you told us, Lord God, to lay the hands on the sick and they shall recover. So let your will be done. In the name of Jesus, let our faith arise. And Lord, perfect, perfect love cast out fear. I thank you for this. I pray for Joan as well right now. And I thank you that your hand is with her. That whatever reason she's there, Father God, that you own, you hold her manual of instruction, that you touch her and that you heal her. And let it be a testimony unto you, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for Nicole's friend. And I thank you, Lord, that the cancer in her body, Lord God, be gone in Jesus' name. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. The precious blood of the Lamb be upon her, in her, with your Holy Spirit presence all over her. And that she may know that you are standing right next to her, that her joy arise and her peace arise in the name of Jesus. Um, and Robert, what was your request? I'm sorry. Your mom. Well, and I pray for Robert's mom, and I thank you, Lord, for your complete healing upon her as well. Oh, Lord, be with her. And uh, I thank you that you minister to her, that she may sense your presence, that she may know, Lord God, that, that, that prayers work, that prayers are calling down the healings of heaven onto thee. So I thank you that you bless her and you heal her in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for all the needs of the church here today. And thank you for what you're doing and you continue to do in Jesus' name. Amen. So we'll dismiss the children. <clears throat> okay. All right. Now gather here, please. Gather all here. All here. All here. I want you guys next to me. Okay. Okay, let's close our eyes and close our mouth. Thank you. <laughs> Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for our children. And we thank you, Lord, that you bless them today, that you protect them. And thank you, Lord God, that your gentle spirit is with them. Your innocence, Lord God, be with them in their hearts. Let them know that they are, that are loved, they are special, and they are called. And thank you, Lord, that you Bless the teachers today, and you have your way with them in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello. So I'm going to, there are two people who are going to give us a, a short testimony before I start speaking. And, um, But I, I want to focus our eyes on Jesus. They are talking about what Jesus does. So let's just think about him. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> As we approach this time, when we think about your power, the gift of God in a human soul, the gift of God in a human soul. Come and be with us. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Sing that again. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. 
I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you, I lift it up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. So these two people, today I'm speaking about the life of God in a, a human soul. What happens within us when God gets inside of us? So they're going to give us a short testimony of what happens to them. Um, and uh, we'll take it from there. So let me start with um, Nick. Actually, I don't think, I don't see the other one. <laughs> you want to come? Take a microphone. Give us a short testimony of, of what God did for you. Three times, so I better be short. <laughs> Prior to becoming a Christian, living a different kind of life, one thing I did was, well, drank some beer and smoked cigarettes ex parte. My friends would tell me, stop smoking those because I'd cough so much. And they were smokers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, at one point, I bet somebody a quart of beer that you know I could quit before him. You think about it all the time, though, when you're not smoking, or at least I did, and your mouth almost drools. And Anyway, I lost. I bought the quart of beer. Became a Christian, and uh, at one point, the pastor up front said, you know, if you have an addiction, come on up front, throw it on the altar, and uh, God can take away the desire. So I'm sitting there thinking, well, that's an offer that's hard to refuse. Um, so I went up front, and there was, you know, needles and syringes and cigarette packages. Um, he prayed for me. Went out afterwards with my buddies, and they joke about smoking, saying, well, we'll just get to heaven faster, um, Christians. <laughs> um, they automatically offered me a cigarette. I automatically went for it, and then thought, wait a minute, don't feel the desire, so I guess I'll not take it right now. Next morning, went to work. Back then, in government buildings, you could smoke inside the building. So went to my work site, um, worked, 10 o'clock, coffee break, the gentleman beside me offered a cigarette, and then little lights went on. I thought, I hadn't even thought of cigarettes all morning. Um, so I declined the offer, and I haven't had one for 40-some years. Wow. Praise God. Wow. So... Um, they were sharing these stories with us. So the other one was um, Jason. Jason is not here. I hope he's fine. Uh, but he was going to share too. But I will say his story. God helped him get off uh, the addiction to uh, nicotine by accident. God did not even ask his permission. <laughs> So during, during the COVID, because people could not go and buy cigarettes, uh, he started ordering the, um, uh, those electronic vibes. How do you call them? Yeah. And unknown to him, he ordered one that was nicotine free. And he started using it. He went through withdrawals. <laughs> Well, what's going on with me? He, f he f could feel like he's going through with drawers, but he's still taking his smokes, uh, his uh, vapes. And then when he went to order it again, when he, has, he had run out, he read, this has 0%. <laughs> and also from that time, he has never used it again. So that's the life of God in a human saw so, what he does. We were, uh, Lynn read for us, Paul saying that 
the things he, that he used to consider as important, they have become like loss, where someone has done that in him. And that's what we are talking about today. The life of God in a human soul. I'll read for you 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 to 7 in the New King James. It says, therefore, 2 Timothy 1, 6, verse 6 and 7. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you, through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So other translations speak about keeping it alive, keeping the frames alive. Let the fire on the altar on the inside of you never run out of um, Never go out. So this is what we are talking about. The gift of God or the life of God within us. If it's genuine, then can do things like that. We call it a foretest of the powers of the age to come. If we have the life of God within us, then he can choose to have us test uh, some of the powers the things that he can do. So I will speak about three things, how this life comes in us, and how if he wants, that life does not want to stay, he wants out. The life of God in us wants to flow out to others. And then we'll speak about um, Maybe that we may sometimes need to repent. Sometimes repentance can be good for the soul. So in John chapter 4, we read uh, an interesting story. Jesus was uh, passing by in the town in Samaria. And as he is, he's a... Uh, full of love. He has so much life in him that he wants to share it with a lady that he found there. And this lady had come to draw water at the well. You read this from um, the whole of chapter, chapter 4. In verse 10, it says, um, Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you, for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. So he says her there, he says, how am I going to get her interested in the life I have? I say, OK, she's coming to draw water. And the, what I have to give is living water. Oh, that's easy. I'm going to use that. Jesus always used images that allowed people to connect. Mm -hmm. So he said to her, please give me some water. And she looks at him. She says, what? You are a Jew? And I am a Samaritan? And I'm a woman? And you are asking me for water? Today, it's like um, seeing maybe a Jew still and uh, a Palestinian. Uh, thinking, oh, let's go for a walk together, you know, or let's go have a meal. It can happen, but it would be miraculous. So Jesus, she said, yeah, how, how can you ask me for, for water? And uh, he said to her, if you knew two things, one is the gift of God, and the second one is who it is that is standing here in front of you. And he, he said to her, you would then have asked him, talking about himself, and he would have given you living water. So the gift of God, we know who that, what that is. What we read earlier, uh, stir up the gift of God that is within you. That's what he's talking about. Peter, Acts chapter 2, when he's talking to 
lots of Jewish people. He said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, and you shall receive what? The Holy Spirit. He said, the gift is for all of you. So Jesus is talking to this lady. She, she, she's talking to him. She's saying, how can you talk to me? And um, he says, if you knew the gift of God, if only you had a revelation of the life of God that he can offer. But not only that, but if only also you knew who it is that is right here. Because the person she's talking to is the giver of the gift. Yeah, so she really needed to know the gift and to know the person speaking to her. And she starts arguing. She say, ah, you Jews, do you think that we, we have to worship God on, in Jerusalem? But we Samaritans worship here. And when the Messiah comes, oh, I just hope the Messiah will come today. I'm just paraphrasing. Because when he comes, he will guide us. He will show us things. Jesus stands at his top. He says to her, time is coming. And time has now come that those who worship the Father we not worship on this mountain or the other mountain, but they will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. If you go a little back backwards to the conversation, he said to her, you would have asked me to give you the gift. He says, this water you're drinking, when you finish drinking it, you're going to get thirsty. But the water that I can give you, is living. Read that again. I would have given you living water. How can water be alive? That's the reality within a Christian. There is a, a real person within us. Within us, many images talk about him as flowing water, living water, living water. This water is alive. It has a will, he, he has a will of it of his own. The water that has a choices, has a, a mind, but within us, he flows. And this is what he says to her. He says, the water that I can give you will come inside of you like a fountain that a well, like a well that wells up everlasting life. That is the life of God in a Christian. We receive water. Once we, be, we drink that water, he becomes within us a well that wells up what? It everlasting life. That's how the life of God enters a believer. You, we want to go to John 7. He, Jesus says, expl we'll explain it more. The way we drink is by believing in Jesus. After we believe, the Holy Spirit comes in us, you know, and he is to become like a well. That I looked in different translation. Some uses bubbling. It bubbles within us everlasting life. Others use welling. Others use springing up. Everlasting life. So this everlasting life, we need to think about this. Heaven is not a place we're going to go to escaping the world. Heaven is a life that came to us. Heaven is a person that enters us. And within us, he bubbles. He wears up what? Everlasting life. So we start to drink from that. That's why people can be healed of, of, of addiction. Because there is everlasting life that has come to us. And sometimes he chooses to have a, us have a taste of the ages to come, the powers of the ages to come. In that country, there will be no cigarettes. There will be no bondage. It's a heavenly city. 
that once we leave this place and we enter, there will be no divorces and no separations, no sickness, no genocides. There will be no drones dropping bombs and families. Kids are living in refugee camps. And they're still pursuing them, throwing more bombs on them. We have to retreat as believers and ask ourselves, do we have the life of God in us? Or is it just a religion that is on the list as other religions? So she says, what, you have living water? Give me that water. And that's when he says to her, time is coming. When the worshipers of God, in fact, he says, the father seeks worshipers. The father is on the lookout for this kind of worshipers. Come on in. OK, someone go and help them, uh, show them a seat, please. So hallelujah. I, I want us to take, I want to take time and uh, talk about this. Um, the Father seeks worshipers. They, they are, how does the Father seek? Thank you, Lord. Isaiah 43 and verse 3. This is the seeking of the Father. For I will pour out water on a thirsty land. This is how he works. He said, I will go for a, a hunt for souls. By my spirit, I will go. Isaiah 43 verse 3, 44, sorry, 44 verse 3. I will pour out water on thirsty land and streams. See, Jesus is quoting a prophecy. And streams on dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. I will go seeking worshipers. Isaiah 4, 55. We used to sing this uh, when I was still in Rwanda. Um, we had written it in a song. It goes like, you want to hear some Kenya Rwanda song? Yeah. <laughs> it goes like this. It means if you are thirsty, all of you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And if you don't have money, also come. And this, past, this verse is amazing. Isaiah 55. If you are thirsty, come to the waters. And it says, come and buy, but don't bring what money. It speaks about the cost of the life of a Christian. It's going to cost you, but it's not money. Come and drink. Come, all you who are thirsty. Come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Next one. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, 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 and live. So the father seeks from Genesis, he introduces his knowledge, and then he says, okay, time is approaching where I will pour out my spirit, where I will create within you a new heart. So the, when Jesus is saying to the Samaritan lady, he said, the father seeks worshipers. I looked up this uh, worship verse in the Greek. Uh, we have some Greek people here. They can help us. Uh, he seeks worshipers. This worship, I found three types or three things that 
this word worship mean? Here in John 3, in John 4, when he's talking to the Samaritan woman, the word there means prostrate, like someone who is on their knees. They are pouring their heart to God. The Father seeks worshipers like that. And uh, it's not a personal thing, it's a collective worship. Because the woman, listen, the woman is saying, oh, we Samaritans worship on this mountain. You Jews say we should worship in Jerusalem. Jesus say the kind of worship is like the church, the church gathering. The Father is looking for the collective worship. Prayer, you could call it prayer. In my language of Rwanda, they've translated it prayer. The prayer, the praying people the Father seeks, they are the ones who pray together as they gather in a certain way. And Jesus explains. So the Father is seeking, he's seeking worshipers when they gather together. This is not your private worship life or prayer life, it's when we meet at church. As they used to meet, you know, Samaritans, we meet on this mountain, the Jews, we go to Jerusalem. He said, no, 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 the Father is seeking worshipers who worship him in spirit and in truth. And what this means really, is that we have to be aware that there is a real person here with us, a real spirit. The spirit of Jesus is here in the church as we gather. And we have to be in awe of him as if we could see him physically. He's seeking worshipers who worship like that. You come to church and you could almost remove your feet. Your, your shoes, because you know this is a holy place. Because you know God is here. He's seeking that kind of attitude. The Father is seeking people who worship God in and by the Spirit of God. First of all, we acknowledge that He's here, and then we know it's through Him, through the Holy Spirit, that our worship is acceptable. But not only that, so that's like an experience. Come expecting to experience God. Come expecting to meet a living person. Come to church with expectation to encounter the spirit of Jesus. And when you are sitting here, ask yourself, am I aware of him? Now, the church, historically, we have fallen into extremes. We either say, no, it's just the truth. Just know the truth. Jesus said it's both, the spirit and the truth. The truth means this person has inspired scriptures. This same Holy Spirit has inspired scriptures and they have been written down. And for us to worship the right way, we need to know the scriptures. We cannot just seek experiences in error. That's not the worship as the Father is seeking. We cannot seek the Holy Spirit and say, oh, it doesn't matter whether our theology is correct or not. Those, no, that's not the worship as the Father is seeking. He's seeking the worship as the churches that will gather, and they will seek the person of the Spirit. They will be open to his work. They will open to his gift. They will open to his manifestation. They will not be afraid of him touching them. But that will happen without error. Scripture, so it's a, you are coming to experience a person but in a biblical way. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are not a separate spirit from the one who gave us the Bible.
you have to underline that the father seeks. He's on the lookout for churches that are doing this. And the father wants to, it pleases him. So we are talking, I spoke now about um, this life of God, how it comes in us, how the Holy Spirit comes, and he, he wells up within us eternal life. This is the eternal life when our bodies die. This life carries on, carries us on. It doesn't matter where your body is buried. Uh, St. Augustine, when his mother was about to die, he asked her, where do you want us to bury you? And she, she, he, will, he will say, I want to put in, like in a church or somewhere special. And she said to him, his life is within me. And when he appears, he will know where to find me. Can you believe that? That's someone who has eternal life. They are not afraid of dying. They know that one day when Christ comes looking for us. Doesn't matter. Some of, uh, you know, in Rwanda now, we are remembering the 30th, 30th year of genocide. And it's this month that it happened in April. So it's, it's like people got scattered and died on the hills on all over. But we have to believe that when Christ comes, he will be able to locate every soul. This is everlasting life that we receive. And uh, it, it, it wears up and bubbles up eternal life. So let's go to John 7. I want to read for you something amazing. The nature or how this life works. John 7 verse 37 it says, on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice. He's going to quote Isaiah we read earlier. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. This is why most of the times Jesus, they used to want to stone him. Because he would quote scriptures they knew. It's, it's the father who had said this in Isaiah saying, come to me, those who are thirsty, come to the waters. And Jesus stands in front of them all. He says, if anyone is thirsty, are you thirsty? Do you have the thirst, the hunger for God? For those who don't have this life of God within you, thirst is recognizing that you tried so many things. Life is not working. There's so many things we try to, to quench this thirst. Mm -hmm. You try money, fame, being known. You try family. You try promotion. You try work. It just sucks life out of you. Mm -hmm. Being thirsty is Humility. Say, God, I think I'm tired. And for Christians, is, we're going to look at that later, is how we try to serve God using the natural life. And we get worried. In fact, I will read for you a passage. It says, my people, they have committed two sins. They have abandoned me, the, the fountain of life, and they have dug up their own cisterns mm. that are broken, that cannot contain water. So he says, if anyone is thirsty, come to me and drink. And he continues, he says, those who believe. So how do we drink? By believing. Those who, if you are thirsty, come to me and, and drink. And the next line is, those who believe in me, as the scripture have said, from within them, that's NIV. 
from their belly, that's the King James, from their inner person, that I looked at so many translations, it means the human spirit, that inner, inner being within you. It says, those who believe in me, something will happen to them. Something that I spoke to the Samaritan woman. Those who believe they will drink. And the life of me, this is Jesus speaking, not Fidel. The life of me will pour in them. And that life will become in them like springs of water. And this water, this time, you know, earlier, with the Samaritan lady, the water is welling up to eternal life. This water now is flowing out. Let's read that. John chapter 7. Verse 38. You have it there? It says, whoever believes in me, as scriptures have said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Going where? So you, we have to establish now that though there is life on the inside that is bubbling and welling up, but he wants out. So he flows out. This is service. This is our ministry. We have to realize that we can only serve God in the power of the Holy Spirit. Those who believe in me, so believing is what enables you to drink. When I was, um, I'm a little weird like that, so I, I meditate in the, on the Bible in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> so Claire is at work upstairs and I, he, she hears someone shouting and say, yes, that's right. That's how it works. <laughs> she, Keep it down. Anyway, I was saying, OK, it's flowing out. It flows out. So you cannot limit him. You cannot be in the way. That's, you remember the scripture we read? The spirit he gave us is not a spirit of fear. Fear can block him. It can block that life from going to others. It's, it's, but it's the spirit of power. That's him, not us. And the spirit of love. Love that touches us, others, and the sound mind. A mind that is confused, the Holy Spirit will not use her. You know, He's trying his best. Just use this. Jesus uses these images to show us how his life in us work. He is to flow out, but sometimes our fear, our ignorance, our lack of emotional trouble, love will not be there. It's the spirit of love. The spirit of love. If our emotions are all over the place. They are not submitted to the love of God. So the spirit will not be able to flow from us. These are not my words. Jesus said, the life I give to you will become in you rivers that want to flow out. So even here, I believe that the river is flowing. The words that I'm speaking to you, they are spirit and they are life and they are Breaking chains. They are healing. They are removing addictions from people. They are creating the love of God in people's hearts. They are cutting the past from your life. They are showing you that you don't have to live in sin anymore. It just hurts you. The rivers, they will flow out. And he was saying, next line, please. So someone may think, oh, how do you know it's the Holy Spirit? By this, he meant the Spirit, whom those who believe in were later to believe, to receive. For up to that time, the Holy Spirit had not been given, for Jesus had not yet been glorified. 
Hallelujah. For those who are thirsty, faith becomes like a mouth that enables us to drink. We drink in Jesus. He says, my blood is real drink. This is the language of faith. It's feeding your inner being. So you're not shaken by any little thing. Not moved. To be spiritual, mature people. If a deacon did not smile at you, you're going to leave the church. You need to drink more of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. He becomes a, a, like a sight that functions like a mouth. I didn't know which language to use. It's like a mouth that allows us to drink in the living water. So I was there meditating and I thought, oh, I need to fast and pray so I can, I can receive this water. And the Holy Spirit gently say, did you read, he who fasts and pray? Because I say, oh, wow, this is amazing. There's life in me that wants out and wants to touch people. I need to fast and pray. The Holy Spirit said, that's the flesh. He didn't say, those who fast and pray, out of their inner being, most being will flow. No, those who believe in Jesus. We have to believe in Jesus. We have to have eyes that see the cross and see him and acknowledge that he did not have to die. You see him, you say, that was for me. That was for me. And I receive it. So he said, yes, you have to fast. But as you fast, know that you're asking for faith, asking that you see Christ. In your fasting, ask God to show you Jesus. So my last point, <clears throat> let the life of God be your source in life. Let him be your source of life, source of energy, source of courage, source of peace, source of anything you like. I want to read for you Jeremiah 2, verse 13. Jeremiah verse, chapter 2, verse 13. And maybe some of us want to repent. Repentance is one of the beautiful words in the Bible. Because it, it brings you closer to God. Jeremiah 2.13, my people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water. Again, that living water. We have forsaken what is in, within us. That life that God has put within us, the spring of living water, we can forsake that and go to look for our own effort. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and they have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. This is the state of the church today. We have great music. You just have to turn on YouTube. Great songs, great preaching. They, have, they know how to turn up your emotions. The Bible calls those broken systems. They cannot contain the life, the living water. It would be good to have all that, but at the same time, let the Holy Spirit be real in the congregation, in the meetings. So as I was saying, worship has three aspects to it. There is prayer. We read this in uh, John 3, when the Father seeks the worshipers, that the word there is prayer. And then there is a lifestyle. The Father seeks worshipers. The way we live, our lifestyle. In Romans 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies, how you offer your bodies, your lifestyle, 
as living sacrifices, holy, pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Other translation says, this is your acceptable worship, lifestyle. The third one is service. And I want to uh, dwell on this. Go to Philippians 3. Uh, earlier on, uh, Lynn took us to Philippians 3. It's the same spirit. Philippians 3, verse 3. It says, it is we who are the circumcision, who serve God by his spirit, who put, who boast in Jesus Christ and put no confidence in the flesh. Those who worship the Father, those who serve the Father, those who want their lifestyle to be acceptable to the Father, they must do it by the Holy Spirit. Paul said, it is we who are the circumcision. We who serve God by the Holy Spirit. And we put no reliance on a natural life. It is helpful for the things of this life. Your education, your finances, your effort, all of it. It's helpful for this life. When it comes to serving God, you cannot put confidence in that. Those are broken systems. They do not hold water, as we read earlier. So Paul is saying, I serve my God by the Holy Spirit, by his spirit. I am aware of him. I am aware of that life within me. And my first line of defense is to make sure I am submitted to him. I am walking by the Holy Spirit. I'm listening, I'm drinking in that life by reading the Bible and by prayer. So, does this life of God exist in your soul? I don't think you can be, you can be in doubt about this. It's impossible. When you are about to say something wrong, do you hear a voice telling you that, that that's wrong? Mm -hmm. When you need to give to someone or you need to help someone, do you feel the flesh saying, oh, but you have all these needs, and someone else urging you to help? Do you have a, a sense of inner voice that says you should be praying? You should be reading the Bible. Or is your life just about the flesh? It is us who are the circumcision, who serve God by his spirit. We glory, we glory in Christ Jesus, and we put no confidence in the flesh or natural life. Today, I want to encourage us to open our heart to scriptures. Yes, you have opened your life to tradition, to culture, to family, to education, to training, to degrees, to the TV, to the news. Please, today, open your heart to the Spirit of God. There is water. Living water that Christ offers those who believe in him. And uh, he comes within and he wears up eternal life. That will sustain you up to eternity. That's the same eternal life that we experience today and he carries us through to eternity. But that water becomes within us like rivers of, of life that want to flow to others in ministry, in blessing others. We do not look for other things, other gimmicks, other th what we can use to, in ministry. Let's go for the real thing. Let's go for the spirit of Christ. 
and believe and let him work. So we're going to pray. You know, remember I mentioned that this life within us, sometimes he, have us, he has us taste, like a foretaste of the powers of the age to come. That's the deliverance we had today. Someone who was addicted to smokes, and just like that, it's gone. And by the way, before you stop, you know, if you have addiction and you're taking medication, um, speak to your doctor. Don't just say, oh, the preacher said that you can heal me, and now I'm going to stop it today. <laughs> you know, I believe that if God wants to heal you, he can heal you any day. We don't have to create conditions, and now you don't have to, you can't take medication anymore. No. He's sovereign. He can do it. So if you have any kind of bondage, you do not have to live with it. There are rivers of living water on the inside of you. And bondage can be on a whole spectrum. Some people are bound. They have sexual bondage. You don't have to be watching those things. They war against your heart, your soul. If you're addicted to pornography, we can rebuke that in the name of Jesus. And you can come to Christ. And if you believe, you're going to have that life that overpowers those desires. You can be addicted. We, spoke, we heard about alcohol or smoking. God can get rid of that. Some people are addicted to food. And you cannot stop eating. The same power can help us. Addicted to spending. You know, you have a way of calling it. You know, let's invest in this. <laughs> Maybe seek the kingdom of God first. See, can we? Yeah, you know, God knows us. But all those are things that when we're in our right mind, we start to think, you know, I should not be doing that. I should not be doing that. But the emotions arise, and you pick up whatever it is. So it's a whole spectrum. But the same spirit helps us. And remember, it's the spirit of Christ who died on the cross. So I'm going to ask um, our elders in training to come to the front. Uh, remember, we have elders who are going to be prayed for if they like to become elders. But right now, come to the front. And uh, as we stand singing, open the eyes of my heart. And if you need prayer, come. Let us stand and sing together. Do you have the words for that song? If anyone needs prayer for whatever reason, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you. glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 I want to see you can the worship band come and help me worship band 
Open the eyes of my clothes Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy to see you highly tell up shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you, I lift it up, shining in the light of your glory. Jesus. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see We are not going to end the work of the Holy Spirit. If you would like prayer, you can still come to one of us for prayer. And uh, may God bless you. Please, if you are available during the week, we have different things going on. Every morning we meet to read the Bible on Zoom. And it's at 6 a.m. We, we send out the link. Um, on Thursdays, we come here for Bible study. So we're going to be re discussing about the message, today's message. And we have 
particular time set aside for intercession and prayer on Fridays at 10 a.m. for those who are not at work. So, and if you, uh, you want to leave me your email, you can leave it to me. My may the blessings of God be with you wherever you go. May the glory of Jesus be a canopy and a wall around you and your family. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you. May he give you peace. In Jesus' name.